This is Exploring Chiropractic, Episode 5 with Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, and I'm Nathan Cash, and this show is not sponsored by any chiropractic institution, including UWS and RMIT, so anything shared in our discussion is the opinion of the guests and the hosts based on our personal experiences. We're not, uh, nothing that we share should be construed as the official opinion, policy, or branding of any of the institutions that we mention. And the featured affiliate for this episode is Audible. You can get a free audiobook download today, yours to keep, by visiting exploringchiropractic.com slash audible. I created this podcast to foster engagement between the chiropractic schools around the world and to help pre-chiropractic students to determine which school is best for them. This is episode five for February 1st, 2014, and we're talking with students from Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, and I'd like to invite them on right now. First up is Mark, and he's a Canadian-Australian, living in Australia since 2003 in Orthodox for 20 years, and just three years ago decided that it was time to fulfill his lifelong journey to become a chiropractor, and is currently a third-year student and works full-time running his own practice and traveling to school. Welcome, Mark. How are you doing? Yeah. All right, right off the bat, we're getting some low bandwidth <laughs> remarks. So I'm going to move on over to Ash. So Ash Burian is a third-year chiropractic student, uh, born and raised in Melbourne, and completed a commerce degree and worked in finance for three years. And along with Mark, is about to commence the third year of the five-year chiropractic program. Welcome, Ash. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Nathan. So how's it going down there in uh, Melbourne? Yeah, good, thank you at the moment. Um, the structure of our course is uh, two semesters over each year, and um, we're currently on summer holidays. Uh, we have a pretty long break in between, uh, in between semesters, so we're currently on a three-and-a-half-month summer long break. So, uh, yeah, just enduring a bit of the heat. It's going to be uh, 41 degrees Celsius over here today. I don't know what that is... Uh, in Fahrenheit, but I think it's uh, over 100. But, yeah, that's uh, very hot. Yeah, it's going to be a hot day. So, uh, But yeah, just enjoying the holidays and uh, looking forward, to be honest, to getting back into study this year. Awesome. We're in the middle of a uh, trimester, uh, so I'm kind of in the middle of mi midterm exams. I've got four coming up this week. Oh, I, gosh. I envy you being on break. Yeah, I, I definitely imagine so. It looks like we got Mark back. Mark, you able to hear us and chat with us? Yeah, I'm just Sounds like it's still a bit rough. Mark, why don't you try to jump out and come on back in? Okay. So, Ash, uh, you mentioned that RMIT is a, so it's on semesters, but the program is very different than what it's like here in the States. Right, we've got yeah. usually a three-year program after a certain number of prerequisites. How does it work down there? Yeah, so down here, I mean, the vast majority, I'd say 60 to 70 percent of students who start the first year of the program, they're straight out of high school. So um, in speaking to a couple of students um, in North America previously, I believe that um, you'll have, you know, a four years of, of chiropractic um, school or college. Um, but before that, you've also done some sort of undergraduate um, program at a university. It's a little bit different here, so um, it's uh, it's not uncommon at all. In fact, it's commonplace for somebody to come straight out of high school at around 18 years of age and go straight into a five-year program. So, um, but I mean, there's not uh, coming out of high school at 18, you can't obviously claim any prerequisites, so you have to complete the full five-year course of um, chiropractic. So, um, and as with regard to probably the other 30% of students that are enrolled, uh, they're, you know, what's deemed mature age students, so they're not out of high school straight away. And some of them, like myself, like Mark, have um, engaged in previous studies, some of it related to, you know, health sciences and some of it not. But um, the structure of our program is a three-year bachelor and then a two years master's program. So you, you need to require both in order to become registered as a chiropractor in Australia. So in the States and Canada, it's a doctorate program. So you're not earning a doctorate degree? 
No, no. We, um, I mean, we, we still get the doctor's title um, once we become registered, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a three-year bachelor and then a two-year master's program at, at current. And is that bachelor's program something that uh, a student could earn on their own just as a separate degree, or is that specifically for chiropractic? It's specifically for chiropractic, so you'd have to do it through um, Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, or RMIT as we call it, um, and yeah, it's uh, majors um, in chiropractic, so that is a prerequisite to doing the master's program. You can't go straight into the master's um, without doing or getting accreditation for the three-year bachelor's um, it's a, it's a three-year Bachelor's of Health Science majoring in chiropractic. So that's the um, program that Mark and I will hopefully complete this year and head into Masters next year. Awesome. All right, Mark, it sounds like you're back. Your video is looking good. Maybe not. <laughs> Things are a bit slow. Yeah, it's getting a bit slow. Ah, uh, bummer. So I got in touch with you guys because Mark emailed me uh, after one of the previous episodes. And it's been a while since I've done an episode because last quarter was just ridiculously challenging. And I'm involved with lots of things outside of school. So I'm really glad that you got in touch and that we're chatting today. What What's going on down in Australia? I know it's hot there, but what's Melbourne like in general? Um, Melbourne is quite a diverse city. Um, it, by population in Australia, it's the second biggest city behind uh, behind Sydney. Who, uh, I guess, a lot of people when you hear about Australia from overseas, uh, Sydney having the Olympics, um, you know, a decade ago, and um, having its iconic bridge and har um, uh, harbour, it's pretty uh, it's pretty well known to overseas people, but. Um, yeah, Melbourne's a very diverse place. Um, you know, it's Australia, you know, having only been sort of founded in the uh, 18th century, uh, it's, been, it's, a, it's a migrant country and um, that's reflected in the, um, the diversity of the people. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting place to live. Um, you know, a few times it's been voted the most livable place in the world and... Um, I'm, I'm not surprised. It's got great food. Um, the people are wonderful. Um, it, you know, there's, I guess our, with our government and whatnot, we, we're a very lucky country um, in terms of um, being able to provide for, for people and whatnot. So um, it's a wonderful place to live. Australia has long been on the top of my list of places to travel. And uh, especially after listening to uh, Bill Bryson's book, In a Sunburned Country, have you yes. guys heard of that one? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, I don't know how well he captures it, but it sure got my attention, and I'm looking forward to someday coming down there. Yeah, well, it's it's um, obviously, without looking at a map or whatnot, it's very vast, and, um, and, you know, of the major cities in Australia, each has its own unique facet, um, you know. So it's, it's a very interesting place uh, made up of a lot of very interesting people, but... Every time I go overseas and come home, you know, I've, it makes me realize how lucky I am, to be honest. So, yeah, very happy here. And the institute, your, your school itself seems like it's quite uh -huh. varied because it's an institute of technology. It's not just a chiropractic school, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So, um, it, we're made up of, um, the RMIT University has thousands and thousands of students. The chiropractic program is one of the programs that they run, but um, uh, and it's actually the only program in the state that we live in that um, uh, is is offered through a university or or a college. So it's the only way if you want to become a chiropractor in the state that we live of Victoria in Melbourne, you have to study at RMIT. Otherwise, you have to go to a, another institution in Australia to be able to become a chiropractor. So, um, but we're one of many thousand students um, across uh, several different campuses, but our campus is based uh, approximately 30 to 40 kilometres out of the city in a suburb called Bund Bundura, so 
Yeah, it's um, it's a it's a, a little bit out of the city, but it's um somewhere that we uh all enjoy being together. Um, the campus that we're on is predominantly health science, so um, uh, and a little bit of engineering, but um, yeah, most of the health sciences are based out on the campus that we're at. In do I understand right that RMIT has campuses elsewhere in the world as well? Isn't there one in Asia somewhere? Yeah, I believe there's one. Uh, I I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to be quoted. Um, it's either Malaysia or China, I believe. And yes, there is a campus there. I can't tell you exactly um, where it is, but there are some students that that come across from there. And um, I know that there are some students that have studied some chiropractic units in Asia and they've come over to RMIT where we're based in Melbourne to um, to complete um, subjects and courses that aren't offered in the Asian schools. That's cool. So you're getting quite a lot of uh, variety there. If you go to exploringchiropractic.com slash schools, I do have a map of all the chiropractic schools in the world and that's where I noticed RMIT and I think you're right in Malaysia. Um, so quite a spread out campus that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has um, its um, positives. So Mark, uh, you turned your video off, so I'm hoping your audio is getting better. Can we turn to you and why did you go to M RMIT? Uh, I'm sorry mate, it's just not coming through. It's getting uh, quite a bit distorted. So Ash, we'll just keep keep going with you. Why did you choose RMIT then? Um, so to in, it, for me, if I wanted to become a chiropractor and I didn't want to go to RMIT, I'd have to relocate. So um, I don't know if it's something that's popular with uh, students in the states um, in terms of relocating for a particular program. Um, there's definitely schools over here that you know are more prestige. Oh, sorry, universities over here that are more prestigious than others. But in terms of the ones that are offering chiropractic, they're all on a similar level across the various institutions that offer chiropractic in Australia. So um, currently, there is a school in Western Australia that offers chiropractic. There's one in Sydney, one. In Queensland um, and one in Melbourne. So at the moment, there's three locations, uh, four locations where you can study chiropractic in Australia. So um, and RMIT, look, it has, it does have a good name, and it and it is a good school. So I, I guess I'm fortunate that I live, um, you know, within a drivable distance of the school to be able to attend it. So, um, to, but to be honest, in terms of researching other universities, um, you know, I was, I went to, uh, I visited RMIT before and enrolled and I was, um, and I was happy and, and I was impressed with um, some of the facilities offered there, so made my choice pretty easy. In the States it's really popular to, to go to the school that's closest to you and it sounds like that's kind of what you did, but not just based on the location, it sounds like there's more uh, regulation around being licensed as a chiropractor based on what school you go to. Um, not so much um, licensing. Um, uh, in terms of being covered as a chiropractor, I don't know if it varies from state to state in the US, but um, uh, chiropractic regula regulation is, is federal in Australia, so, be, so it applies, um, all licensing applies Australia-wide, so um, once your course is, is um, approved um, as, a, as a chiropractic um, once your institution is deemed appropriate to provide chiropractic um, uh, education and it, it meets the um, it meets the levels required by the board, and you're, once you become licensed, um, there's not much differentiation in between the licensing from state to state and institution to institution. It's just the uh, level of education. Um, that's brought across to each student um, depending on which college they attend. Alright, so that sounds pretty similar. There are There is a, a national board that you have to pass here and then there are state boards to be licensed in each state that's separate. Uh, yep. So I think I just misunderstood when you're talking about relocation that's you didn't want to relocate for school. 
Yeah, correct, correct. Um, yeah. You know, obviously the costs involved with, um, you know, going and moving interstate. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to still, you know, be in my area and, um, you know, keeps costs to a minimum and getting a job easier. Um, so, yeah, that was the predominant reason I, uh, I studied where it's because it's where I'm from. Was there anything that surprised you once you got into the curriculum, once you started maybe after a year? Anything that you're a little surprised the school was teaching or doing? Um, to be honest, not particularly. As I said, or as you mentioned in the intro, I studied finance before becoming um, a chiropractic student. So um, going, leaving a career that was... Um, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a good career in what I was doing and I was very lucky to be at the firm that I was working at and um, for me to make a pretty big decision like that, um, I'm, I'm a pretty analytical person so I, uh, I, made, uh, I made the decision to sort of go through a full undertaking. Um, so I knew what I was in for when I started and um, there was nothing that really surprised me. I, that, I guess if there was one thing though, it was... Um, the unity of all the students there. Everyone really, um, everyone really got on board, um, getting involved with social interaction, and um, and uh, really enjoyed um, getting along with one another and supporting one another. So, in my commerce degree, that certainly wasn't that unity between students. Um, everyone's very friendly in our course, so which is another advantage. That sounds great. So, Mark, you're calling in. I'm going to give you another great chance here. Now. Oh, yeah, you're coming in great now. Yeah, good. Oh, thank you um, for trying a couple times. <laughs> Look, I guess the only thing I wanted to probably say on what Ash said was that um, really it's, uh, it, to me, I think much like some of the stuff I've heard you say before and some people have told me in the past, you know, you, you find something that you're, passionate about and you keep going from that and really what you do is you find a school that gives you the groundwork to pass the qualification and we don't, we don't the difference to here is we don't actually have board exams uh, but you, you pass the qualification and you can then practice and that's when you're really going to learn a lot of the stuff. I think that um, that's, that's what I've noticed with um, with RMITs, there's there's often outside workshops that you can attend. So SOT seminars and you know AK and all those, a lot of other seminars that would be a little bit different to just uh, you know go picking a school because those are the techniques that they choose. Does the school itself focus on a particular technique, a technique system, or or philosophy? Did you want to take well, that, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess from from the outside, my my perspective is is that they they do but they don't. So the two main techniques that we definitely learn in in the undergrad portion is diversified and Gonstead. And really, I think there's been a lot of scrutiny in Australia around chiropractic, and there's a I won't get into the political reasons why, but there's a few things that have happened recently, and so I think the school tends to not. Um, side with maybe the more philosophical side of chiropractic, just more to protect itself. Would you say that's right, Ash? Yeah, definitely. There's been um, there's been some underworld uh, underworld sort of conjecture about uh, chiro the role of chiropractic in Australia, and it's um, it's unfortunately gained a lot of unwarranted media attention. But um, I think it's added to the resolve of um, you know, chiropractic in this country and, and the role it plays. Um, you know, simply if uh, if it did if it didn't work, um, you know, there wouldn't be so many people coming back to to see chiropractors. But now, um, with regards to the program, I guess you can't really say we're you know a, a biomechanical sided school or a, a vitalistic school. In you know, in speaking with other students globally, sometimes their schools tend to have more of a skew to one side or not. But um, ours, from what I've, through my experience, tends to be somewhere in the middle. And, um, and you know, there's, there's, 
there's, uh, as Mark was elaborating on before, there's opportunities to be involved in, uh, in you know, outside um, uh, workshops and whatnot. If you want, it, it's there if you want it. So it, anything that you want to get out of the program, there's always a, a means to obtaining further information, which is um, which is really good. You can you can take it wherever you want to take it. Yeah, that political uh, tension isn't really any different than here in the states, actually. And may I don't know if you guys can talk about it, but I've been well aware of what's going on down at Macquarie University in Australia, and I've been trying to keep track. I contacted the school to see if I could learn more. Is there anything you can share about what's going on down there? Uh, well, I wrote a I wrote a letter like a lot of people did, um, voicing my. Uh, <laughs> almost disgust at the way in which they've treated students and uh, kept students and staff in the dark about how they've conducted their affairs. Um, no, I'm and hoping I'm not... Sorry. For the listeners, just to clarify, M Macquarie University is kind of like RMIT. It's a, a large university with a variety of programs. Chiropractic is one of them, and recently the, the school made the decision that they were going to... Um, Tr kind of transfer the chiropractic program out of Macquarie and they're looking for another university that will take them under their wing. So that's what's going on down there. Yeah, that's correct. So uh, there's been no um, official announcement at, at this stage with regards to that um, as far as I'm aware. But um, I know that they're looking and there's been um, tendering of offers for program or other universities just to take on the chiropractic program. But um, Macquarie does have a very good name in um, uh, medical and health sciences in uh, the state of New South Wales where the university is. So uh, some of the justifications, and I don't want to go into it because I don't want to make this political, but some of the justifications the the, uh, the dean provided with regards to transferring out were uh, a little bit short-sighted and uh, it just sort of, uh, it, it displayed a lot of poor leadership with regards to how they handled it. So, And at the end of the day, it's the, the students and the staff that are, are the ones enduring the uncertainty, which is, you know, it's disappointing for chiropractic. And the administration has promised that the degree that the students will get will be from Macquarie University, even if they finish their program at a, at a different institution, uh, and that they will complete the program. But it, nevertheless, that's pretty uh, disheartening and, and frustrating as a student to kind of have your program being taken away from you in a way. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's done on the whole evidence-based grounds and, um, you know, uh, that's just a, that's another argument, I guess, <laughs> for another yeah, it, time. Yeah, but we it's did. Something, but it's unfortunately time, something uh, that just gets thrown at, uh, uh, you, you know, it's just an argument that people throw at chiropractic that, um, you know, don't, uh, don't understand it, so it's disappointing. Mark, do you have anything else to add to that? Yeah, no, I was just going to say that's probably, I think, the, the focus of RMIT coming into the future, I think, is to be more evidence-based. Um, and and I know that a couple of the new lecturers that have come on board, that you know, they, they're involved in research and they're trying to make sure that we get research and and that backs up or at least quantifies what whatever it is we're, we're saying that you know chiropractic does so I think that's something to look forward to it's just going to become stronger and stronger. Great Mark I want to hear a little more about uh, your experience in a in a profession and then coming into chiropractic school but we're going to take a quick break here I want to take a minute to mention the affiliate for this episode audible.com and I'm going to pull up uh, audible right now on on my screen so audible is a, uh, a library of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment and I've listened to now well over a hundred audiobooks that I've downloaded on here and it's just a great way to getting more information and learning more about whatever interests uh, you might have and uh, so about over the Christmas break I spent a few days going down to Yellowstone and spent a couple days camping in the snow. It was quite fun. 
And while I was there uh, along the drive, it was a 13-hour drive both ways, and I listened to a great book called Surviving Survival by Lawrence Gonzalez. And he, he's done a lot of research into survival and uh, you know, why people survive or why people die. And this one was all about the aftermath, because after survival, uh, there's still a lot of stuff that you got to deal with. So, fascinating book, and there's hundreds of others that you can choose from. If you'd like to get a book from Audible, visit exploringchiropractic.com slash Audible. So, Mark, you were an uh, orthotist for 20 years and then decided to come into school. Yeah. So, actually, I, I was always a chiropractor, and I became an orthodist for 20 years. I think it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because when I was looking at going to school back when I was younger, I was um, that's exactly what I was looking at. I was looking at the choice between two, and at that time, I was in Canada, and moving all the way across to, to Toronto to go to CMCC sounded like a pretty frightful thing. So I stuck with something that was maybe a little more safe, I guess. But really, I think my passion was always chiropractic. But I don't think that uh, doing orthotics and prosthetics has really uh, made a, a huge, you know, it's not um, like I was heading in the opposite direction. There are, there are some connections. I find that a lot of um, the coursework that I do at the moment, I think a lot of it is, you know, I, di I did get a number of exemptions because of it. But also, it makes a lot of the coursework a little more... Um, clinically obvious to me rather than maybe just learning it from book work. So I did come a long way around, but um, I think I've managed to sort myself out. And it, what is, explain real quick what an orthotist is. I'm not sure that we use that term here. Is it orthopedist or...? No, uh, you, you guys would use it as orthotist. So um, uh, there is a number of different programs running through the states anyhow. And uh, so mainly people that make and fit uh, orthopedic braces or different long leg, um, you know, spinal braces for people that have had fractures. You might see some of the big football fellows that wear uh, knee braces. Uh, and then obviously there's prosthetics, so building artificial limbs. That's all a combined part of the, um, the training that I did. Got it. That's fascinating. So uh, w was there any particular reason that you chose RMIT? Look, I think coming, when I first moved to Australia in 2003, I don't think I was actually thinking of coming to university at all. I, I had a young family and, you know, I was, I'd actually taken up a position in Sydney for a year and we were really just living in Australia. So for me, I didn't really, I don't think I really picked RMIT as such in that um, it just made logical progressional sense for me if I'm living in Victoria, much like Ash said, you know, if I'm living here, I might as well check out the school that's here. And um, I did inquire around at um, both. Um Sounds like we're losing Mark. Ash, are you involved in any extracurricular uh, activities at school involved with uh, the program? Yeah, I've been involved in a in a couple. Um, from the get-go, I've been involved in a student organisation called the World Congress of Chiropractic Students, or WCCS. Uh, some of your listeners may be familiar with it or heard of it. Uh, it's a global organisation that has chapters based in 25 chiropractic schools globally, and uh, we get together once a year for the uh, AGM. Um, it varies from year to year. Last year it was held at uh, the Durban University of Technology, um, DUT, and this year it's going to be uh, hosted by the Barcelona College of Chiropractic um, down in Malaga in Spain. So it's a, it's a student organisation which, um, you know, encourages, uh, you know, the progression of chiropractic through um, through leadership, and um, it's been a very interesting and rewarding organisation to be involved with, and given me many opportunities to engage with students from overseas and get their insights into chiropractic, which has been extremely beneficial. That's great. I just like them on Facebook. I hadn't heard of them until today. Um, are they? Do they? Are they like? Um, there's the IFCS, which is. Uh, another international federation of chiropractic, I think. Uh, are they philosophy-based? What's their main goal? 
They're completely impartial. Um, you know, 100% impartial. They don't side on one side of, um, you know, either from a biomechanical or vitalistic viewpoint. Um, I guess the purpose is to um, unite and advance the, the profession, which is stated in their, you know, in their aims and their vision statement. But um, you know, it's really the goal is to, again, not getting political. There's a lot of organisations and. Um, you know, board organisations out there which may have a particular uh, skew one way or the, the other and this group provides, you know, um, a great level of, um, you know, being impartial. So, um, you know, students can all engage on an equal playing field and share their views and, um, you know, bring ideas to the organisation. Um, so it, it's it's been very rewarding to be involved with so far and it's uh, it's incorporated a couple of years ago so it's it's taking steps to become more more professional um, you know we're trying to have uh, more representatives be at you know various seminars and um, leadership gatherings um, around the world and um, you know it's uh, it's taking time but it's it's getting there and it's um, great to be a part of I'm glad you brought this up because I was contacted recently from a student um, by a student at Barcelona and in his email he told me he was involved in WCCS and I didn't know what that was at the time. So yep. yeah, yeah, I'm checking out their page and they've got uh, Malaga 2014. Are you going to be going? That's only in 52 days. Yes, yeah, so I've been lucky enough to... Um, so each chapter um, globally at each school will uh, select um, representatives to go, so I've been lucky enough to be rep um, elected by my chapter to, to go along, and I'm heading along with five other students from RMIT, so very much looking forward to uh, spending some time at the AGM in Malaga, and uh, you know, last year there was around 120 students from across the globe, and hopefully uh, there'll be a similar amount this year. Yeah, this looks awesome. I'm checking out the the members of the WCCS uh, by school. It looks like about half of the schools in the in the United States. Uh, a number. Well, it looks like um, I'm trying to see Canada. I'm not seeing if I noticed that, but then a few more down in South America, and they've got regional conferences going on. One coming up in Brazil. It looks like so. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's, it's been good. We uh, RMIT hosted a regional event last year, which uh, which is very successful. We got a lot of prominent chiropractic uh, people in Victoria to speak. Um, we also got uh, we also hosted the president of the World Federation of Chiropractic as well. So, um, you know, it's it's been the organisation has come on in leaps and bounds recently, and um, it's been fantastic to be a part of, and it's a fantastic way of finding out what's happening in chiropractic abroad. And is it, uh, how, how can you join? Is there a fee to join, or do you just. Yeah, so, it, so um, I mean, if your school has a chapter, it's obviously a lot easier to be involved with the WCCS because your, your chapter is involved or, you know, assigned to your university. But I know that um, the WCCS is trying to reach out to schools that aren't members at the moment to help try and create a chapter. I know that there have been several US schools that have, um, you know, not continued with their membership. Um, you know, like any organisation, there is work required to go into it to maintain the chapter and um, holding minutes and having a committee and whatnot. So unfortunately, some of those committees have fallen by the wayside. And um, we're hoping that, you know, through the, the work that we want to do and are doing, that, you know, we can eventually get back to a situation where the majority of schools are represented and have a, a WCCS chapter. But um, uh, Facebook's a good way to follow if you're a non-member and you're interested um, to see what we're doing. Also, through the website, um, there, it's another good way of being able to access information about what we do and where we're at at the moment as an organization. Fabulous. Thanks for sharing that. I'm definitely going to check that out, take a better look at that. Uh, I think we're going to uh, wrap it up pretty quickly, but Ash, I want to ask, as I do everybody, 
What is one thing that you would change about RMIT if you could? Uh, if I could, and it was completely my own opinion, uh, I'd provide more resources to the staff at the university. Because we are a university and are governed by, uh, I guess, a broader parent that has many, many courses, uh, in my own opinion, I feel that the fees that we pay aren't adequately distributed to our program, that they go more towards other programs. And uh, it's very disheartening to see how I think some of the staff, you know, they just, they'd never admit it, but they work very, very hard and provide a very good level of education. We have a very good teaching staff at RMIT. And uh, I feel like if they had more resources, it would be make their job a lot easier. And, you know, it would attract even um, more um, staff to the program. So. In, a, in an ideal world, which it definitely isn't, um, yeah, I'd, I'd love our program to probably get the money that it deserves, but uh, that's the state of play at the moment, and um, in some respects, I guess we're lucky to still have a program, so, <laughs> so yeah, no, very happy. Yeah, I hadn't, hadn't thought of that aspect. It sounds like being part of a larger university would have a lot of benefit, but, but I, I can imagine that you kind of feel sometimes pushed to the side when there are other... Uh, bigger problems. It's kind of like sports in the United States in the in the collegiate uh, arena. You know, those sports like lacrosse or women's volleyball just don't get the funds when football, American football, is so popular and they get almost all of the money. Yeah, exactly. I guess um, chiropractic isn't uh, isn't as sexy or as uh, you know politically um, you know through the the eyes of certain you know. Politically minded people isn't uh, doesn't warrant that the the funding that it, it's probably due, but you know that's how it is. You just gotta you just gotta persevere. Chiropractic may not be sexy, but the chiropractic students we definitely are. Oh, definitely agree. <laughs> so what is what is the favorite your favorite thing about RMIT though? Uh, the students and the staff. I know that probably sounds a little bit cliche, but uh, like a lot of things in life. Um, the people make it, so and uh, people in my year, people in other years, and the passion of the staff it uh, it drives your internal passion and you know affirms to me why I made the switch from you know a good finance job into going back as a, a 24 year old to study chiropractic and being poor for another five years while I studied. Um, you know that just keeps my passion burning and um, I count myself very lucky. That's great. Uh, I'd like to wrap it up by sharing our tick picks, and uh, I think you already mentioned yours. Yeah, so uh, for students that are, uh, I mean, I've got a lot out of the WCCS um, as an organization in, in terms of opening my mind to uh, what's going on in the world of chiropractic. Um, you know, things like your podcast as well, it's a, it's a great way of being able to, to find out more about um, studying chiropractic in other schools because, um, you know, I feel it's really important. So if you're at all interested in finding out what's happening at other schools globally, it's um, it's a good way of engaging yourself in that environment. Great. Thanks for the, uh, uh, the bit of a plug there. Uh, yeah. My tick pick this week is Motion Palpation Institute. Uh, as you guys mentioned, there are a lot of uh, techniques and seminars that you can take outside of school, and this was the first one that I've done and it's uh, motionpalpation.org is the website for it. And it, what I like about it is that it doesn't, um, you know, they're not trying to lock you into one technique. They use a lot of different techniques, and it, they, they cover diagnosis, adjusting, rehab exercises. They use a lot of dynamic neuromuscular stabilization, or uh, DNS, which is becoming very popular around here. Uh, some functional movement systems and Yanda, which is a soft tissue mainly uh, protocol of treating and and correcting, you know, muscle imbalances and that type of thing. And it was it was a lot to learn in one weekend. We went through probably a hundred different tests and exercises. 
in you know just under I think 10 hours. So a lot to learn, and this is just the lower extremity. They do upper extremity, lower extremity, spine. Uh, three different seminars that you can do, but I really liked it. And it, for my first uh, technique seminar, uh, I really learned a lot. So it was really great. So that's motionpalpation.org. You can check that out. Well, Ash, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me on uh, Exploring Chiropractic today. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And I want to thank Mark, and I'm so sorry that we couldn't keep him on for longer. There are a few other questions I wanted to get to, but uh, it's the nature of the Internet, and I'm really grateful that he reached out and got in touch with me a few months ago and that we finally could find a time to meet together. Definitely. No, it's been great. All right, well, for more information on RMIT, what's the website, Ash? Uh, www.rmit.edu.au, and uh, if you go through the health science page, you'll uh, arrive at chiropractic, and there uh, should be some information on the website um, that can explain it a lot better than I can. <laughs> and we'll post all that information at exploringchiropractic.com. Please tune in for some upcoming episodes, as I mentioned, with Barcelona. I'm going to be branching out a bit and interviewing some doctors as well and uh, having to hang out with a bunch of students across the world that are involved in social media and talking about why a chiropractic student might want to get involved in that. Thanks again, Mark and Ash and RMIT. This is Episode 5 of Exploring Chiropractic. <laughs>